In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at Fusion Connect from DaVinci Resolve. I'm actually using Resolve 14 Beta 7 and the new Fusion 9. Now, I've been playing around with this a little bit, and the workflow is quite nice. Um, it hasn't changed a whole lot since uh, Resolve 12, or 12.5, I guess, and uh, Fusion 8.2. But I've sort of got a renewed interest in the way these two work together. And in particular, I've been looking at a problem that I came across that's a workflow issue. And that is when I place a Fusion Connect clip on the timeline and then later on have to grade the underlying clip, I run into some problems. But in this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate that problem and then show you a couple of ways that I've come across that are pretty decent workarounds. Okay, first let's go into a new project here. We'll bring up Resolve. I'll switch over to the media page. I'm going to grab one of these one of these clips that I've used in the past and I'll allow it to change my project settings to match the clip. And I'm just going to go into the clip attributes for the sake of this tutorial and I'm going to set the audio channels both to mute so that we don't have to listen to the audio as I'm scrubbing through it. You can also turn off audio scrubbing, but in this case, this works best for me. And I really only want to take a short segment of this clip, so I'll set an endpoint here plus, let's say, 10 seconds. Hit the out. So now I've got a mark in and mark out on this clip, and I'll create a new timeline using that selected clip allow the defaults and notice that I've got use selected mark in and mark out so I'll create that. There's our new timeline and you can see that we've got our roughly 10 seconds there. It's actually 10 seconds and one frame. Okay so this is not graded yet but let's say I come along here and I get overly enthusiastic about using Fusion. So I'm going to create a new Fusion Connect clip. We'll call it Fusion 1. I'm using a TIFF format. I'll explain why later on. I don't actually have to use a TIFF format for this workflow. I've also set up a custom location just so I can track the, the files that get created here. And I'll create the clip. Now, really nothing has happened yet. What I'm going to do now in Fusion Connect is I'm going to render the media. Now this will happen automatically if I were to have selected Open Fusion. But we'll do the rendering of the media here. You can see this can be done as a separate step. I'll come back when this is done. Okay, great, that's done. Now I have a Fusion Connect clip. I can say open it up in Fusion. Okay, I'm not going to go into the details too much of how Fusion works, but we've got basically our source, which I'm looking at in in the first monitor here, and then this is our saver. So I'm going to select the source, and I'm using on a Windows machine a control spacebar to bring up the list of tools, and I'm going to put in a, a text plus tool and that automatically adds my merge node. And I'm going to select the text plus tool and I'll enter in some text. I can size the text and I'll just grab the little widget there to pull it down a little bit. Now with the text selected I'm also going to hit the control space again and just type in drop. I'd like to use, uh, I've got a nice BCC drop shadow here, so I'll just plunk that in. You see how it inserts it between text and the merge node, and you can see that it's added a nice little bit of uh, drop shadow there. So that's all I'm going to do within Fusion, but before I return back to Resolve, I need to render this. So I'll click the render button. We're going to select Final, 
render quality and just start the render. And I've got a pretty slow machine here, so this will take a while. And I'll be back when it's done. Okay, the render's complete. I'll leave Fusion running here, and I'll just click on the taskbar here to get back into Resolve. And if I just move the timeline cursor here, you can see it's popped up. Okay, great. So overly enthusiastic, created my Fusion clip very early on. I could have done something fairly elaborate here, presumably. And then my next uh, step in the process is to go and grade my clip. And I'm looking at this thinking, oh, it's, you know, it's, it's not very good. I'd like to do something, maybe make it a little stylized. So I'm going to, you know, play around with the lift. You'd never do this in reality. And play around with the gain a little bit and give it, ooh, it's got a bit of a 70s look to it. But it's actually changed the color of the text as well. And that wasn't at all what I wanted. So what do I do? Well, I'll reset the node grade. There's a couple of ways to approach this. And I'll show you the first way by simply going back over to the edit page. And we don't want to grade on top of the Fusion clip. What we want to do is grade the media that was underneath Fusion. So what I'm going to do is right click and open up in timeline and what I've done basically is step down into the media underneath the Fusion Connect clip. This guy here. Now I can come over and uh, actually this is a new feature. I'll just take this. I'm going to select something black and then I'll select something. I'm going to pretend that this is white. Basically I've regraded this clip. It's not a very good grade but for demonstration purposes it's fine back over to the edit page and I'll step back out okay now you can see that I still have the old grade here because what I'm seeing is the rendered fusion clip not the underlying clip so I'll right click on this and I'm going to force a re-render of the media and this will regenerate the source media from the graded clip And I'll be back in a moment. Okay, we've re-rendered it. Now I had Fusion running in the background here, so what will happen is I'll get sort of a bit of confusion between the two clips because Fusion's done a little bit of um, caching in the background. So I'm going to close this and I'll actually save that comp. And I'm going to open up the Fusion clip once again from DaVinci Resolve. Okay, you can see the graded clip. And so in this case, all I have to do is re-render. So you might have had some very elaborate fusion set of interconnected nodes here and you don't want to redo it. And while you could actually copy those nodes and paste it to a new project, this is simply another example of how of slight variation on that workflow where I want to make use of the project and I'm just replacing the underlying clip. Okay, render's done. And we can see as we move this around you can see that we've got the perfectly graded clip and we haven't affected the text itself so that's one workaround I'm going to return to the media page I'm going to make a new timeline let's just make a new time using the selected clip we'll call it timeline 2 this time again I've got the use selected mark in mark out create now this time I'm going to use a different approach. I'm actually going to use a compositing approach where I create a fusion clip that has only the text and drop shadow and preserves the alpha. And I'm going to place that over top of, of this clip. Now, there, there doesn't seem to be any way for me to do this without first doing a bit of a workaround. So I'll hold the Alt key and just drag up. So I've got a duplication now of the clip. I'm going to put make this the fusion clip. So I'll select new Fusion Connect clip again. And this is the important part. 
I had to select a format that actually preserves alpha. So TIFF happens to, I don't have ProRes on this system. So I've got TIFF. I know I've played with this before that I can get a nice alpha channel out of a TIFF file. So I'll create that. And now I'll open it up in Fusion. Now remember last time I was saying because I've opened it in Fusion and there's no rendered clip yet, it does the rendering first. It's basically just creating a, a TIFF sequence of uh, images in one folder and then when we render inside Fusion it puts the rendered values into a separate subfolder and Resolve manages that. Okay, so we're back in again. Just double check with the TIFF file sequence on our saver node that the save alpha is selected. Now we'll go back. I'm going to select the source. Control Shift. And we'll do a text plus again. Select the text plus. I can put. Size it up a little bit. With the text selected, control shift and put on BCC drop shadow. I'm not going to do anything fancy with it exactly. Now here's the interesting workflow change. I'm going to disconnect the source and I'm going to put the drop shadow in as the background on the merge node. So you can see the checkerboard is the transparent alpha and then you've got your drop shadow and your and your text over top of that and I'm going to take this and render it so I've got final full frame size start the render and what this does is it'll render a TIFF sequence with alpha and I could have a fairly elaborate title in here with with uh, animations I could have the title tracking something that was in the original video and then now I'm simply hiding the source video so that all you get is the alpha and then this will be displayed back in resolve over top of the duplicate clip I'll just save this comp Okay, so here we are. If we go over to the grading page, you can see that we have the clip underneath, which is the actual video now, and then we have the clip over top. And we can, well, I'll look at it in timeline mode, and you can see actually if you turn off the, the lower portion, there's your Here's your clip from the fusion with the alpha channel. So I'm actually going to do the grading on the lower clip. And again, this gets around the problem of we don't we don't want to grade the the titling itself. So I'll select the lower clip. I'm going to use that same approach. These little Little controls are new for Resolve 14. So there's my at least a similar grade. And if I go back over to the edit page, you can see that I've got the, the graded clip quite separate. I can turn off my titling. Turn it back on again. Turn off the clip itself. So this approach actually would work quite nicely for, for titling typically. The other approach, if we go back to timeline one, where you actually just have the one clip, this would be more appropriate, I think, if you were doing a lot more work where you were retaining uh, the, the source footage itself as part of the fusion composition, right? Then you'd really want to keep it and then you could still update the grading inside Resolve after the fact. 
Okay, so that went a little bit longer than I thought it would, but uh, that gives you an idea of at least a couple of works workarounds and using Fusion Connect with Resolve. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you.